was speaking at Hyde Park High, Hyde Park High School, and uh, by that time Hyde Park was predominantly African American. And in the Q and A that came up after my remarks, this one young man got up and said, "What are you going to do about all those camps that they got to put us black people in?" And I said, "I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know about any camps. But when I'm through, why don't you come up and tell me what you're talking about?" And he came up afterwards and he showed me a picture that had appeared in Muhammad Speaks, which was the black Muslim newspaper at the time. And it showed a camp with barbed wire and so on. It said property of the United States government. And it was in some town in middle Illinois. And I said, I don't know anything about this, but I'll try to find out. And I sent a staffer down there who came back and said, yes, there is this big area down there, and it has barbed wire, and there's this sign, property of the United States government. There's nobody in it, and nobody knows anything about it. So I went back to Washington and started doing some research and found that in the 50s, as part of our one of our many red scares and part of the McCarthyism uh, stuff, they the Congress had passed a bill, an Internal Security Act, which provided that camps would be set up in case of riots or other public uh, turmoil the attorney general could place people in those camps. A terrible law. And I was outraged to know that it was on the books. So I started getting a repeal bill drafted, and then I found out that the Japanese-American members of the Congress had been way ahead of me. They had been there when that bill had passed, some of them, and they had opposed it, and they were remembered the terrible camps that we had after world during World War II for Japanese Americans, and they'd been trying to repeal the law ever since. But every time they would put in a repealer, it would go to the House on American Activities Committee, which was a very anti-civil liberties committee, and it would not see the light of day. So my staff and I were, were muttering about it, and then one of my staffers said, well, why don't we, instead of repealing it, just put another provision in the judicial code that says that no one can be put in any federal institution without, uh, except pursuant to a uh, law passed by Congress. And uh, I got the drift of it. We, we drafted a bill, and I went to the parliamentarian, and I showed him the bill, and I said, what, what committee would this bill be assigned to? And he grinned, because he was on our side on it, and he said, that would go to the Judiciary Committee. Well, I was a member of the Judiciary Committee, and it passed out of the Judiciary Committee uh, unanimously. And we got to the floor, and it had a little bit of uh, jurisdictional fighting, but we overcame that, and it passed the House. It went to the Senate, and it passed uh, on a voice vote in the Senate, and President Nixon signed it. And it is the law, and it has effect till today. Uh, it was used... Uh, in some of the Guantanamo cases as a basis for giving the citizens uh, extra process. And I, what I'm so proud of is that this is a bill that passed not because of the great genius of the congressman, but because this one kid in a high school had the temerity to raise it with a congressman, and the process worked to, to change the law. That's the way it's supposed to work. <laughs>